It's time now for Viewpoint, and today we talk about the rampant resurgence in COVID-19 caseloads here in the country and elsewhere amid the summer season. For more, I have Professor Kim Mungu from Yonsei University. Professor Kim, welcome back. Thank you for having me. I also have Professor Yu byung -wook from Sunchang University. Welcome back, Professor Yu. Good afternoon. Right, Professor Kim, South Korea's caseloads, like I mentioned earlier, have been mounting, as have the numbers of critical cases as well as fatalities. What are your thoughts on our tallies thus far? Well, uh, the cumulated cases of Korea now uh, reached more than 20,000. And there might be more uh, because some people uh, didn't uh, had the uh, PCR test. So uh, the highest peak was in mid-March. And the uh, seven-day average of our uh, daily tally was about 7,800 per million per day. That was the highest, and now we have about 1,700. So, so uh, it's rising, and interestingly, uh, the speed of rise almost identical with Japan. And uh, uh, I don't know why, but both countries are now experiencing a BA5 subvariant of Omicron. So that might be a one explanation. And uh, uh, since uh, we have uh, more people never uh, infected. I think it's going to rise for a few more weeks. Right, I see. And Professor Yu, it appears now that quite a number of countries, perhaps even here, South Korea, they are seeking to focus their COVID-19 strategy perhaps more on treatment rather than on prevention, if I may. How do you respond? Well, for me, actually, this morning I attended a patient who are Korean who were bring to the two line of the lapid kit. So we couldn't imagine before because it should be a different line, different place, and we should take care of them to isolate it. But now we are living with a patient with a COVID-19, especially what Professor Kim mentioned about BA.5, is sub-variants of the Omicron. Sub-variants of Omicron like a BA.5 and BA.25, and anything, this is very similar as like a seasonal flu. Okay, let's recall before COVID-19 era. So patients with a COVID influenza, we're not afraid about it. We have a patient, it's like a clinic in the town, small clinic. We are checking their breathing sound and we give the medication and we do treat it and the test it as well. But that time we not isolate each. COVID-19 is very new, but already two years passed. So now it depends on the country like Korea and US developing countries, developed country in Europe, have a capacities and the medical equips and the medical, the medical manpower can take care of them. So now we are focused to the treatment and also time to switch of the thinkings about the Omicron because we are still the hold of the phantasm, the kind of the unknown, you know, the kind of we are so afraid about unknown things, but now we are knowing about it and get used to about it. So in Korea, it's also people we are general. We have to and ready to accept this Omicron in among our life. Right, and then of course move forward. Professor Kim, over in the U.S., President Joe Biden re-entered isolation after a rebound of COVID-19 after a five-day course of Pax Lovid. Could you tell us a bit more about this phenomenon? I mean, how common is it? And is the patient contagious during this rebound? Uh, yes. Uh, President Joe Biden was PCR positive and he took five days course of Pax Lovid and uh, he was getting well and he turned PCR negative. But uh, three days later, uh, the PCR turned positive again, even though the president was feeling well. So this phenomen phenomenon we call a rebound happens about two to six percent of the patient who took Paxlovid. Uh, at the beginning of this uh, drug development, uh, they thought that it might be less than uh, those percentage, but uh, in practice uh, it happens, but it's not that common. As uh, uh, President Joe Biden had this fourth dose of Pfizer vaccine, it, this kind of rebound can happen in this situation. And uh, researchers believe that uh, the rebound phenomenon can cause transmission, that they, they can spread the virus. So the recommendation is you have to keep isolation for five more days and maybe 
uh, total 10 days of mask wear wearing might be uh, mandatory. Um, we don't know why this kind of uh, 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 thing happens, so we have to find it out. Right, and staying with this phenomenon, now, Professor Yu, have there been similar cases of Paxlovid rebounds here in South Korea? And what measures do you recommend in the event of such a case? Does the patient receive another, perhaps, course of Paxlovid then? Well, in Korea, fortunately or unfortunately, we don't have any report yet, like a Paxlovid rebound case like uh, President Biden. But I can tell our dear watching the Aaron TV, you can see my two finger, right? We can call their finger. But if I cover that, we cannot see the fingers. But there are still fingers. So this is a Paxlovid. Paxlovid help to the cut of C3L protage, which is the help to duplicate it to the virus, like uh, make the another multiplied. But the problem is the, this, the Paxlovid is help to the cutting of the duplicate process for shortly five days, but sometimes it's very active and transmissible case like a B.5. It can be not block 100%. Let me know if I have many fingers using the Paxlovid, cover it. But if unfortunately one or two left, but stop the medication, reduplicate it again. It's kind of one of the theory it can be, what the Professor Kim mentioned. So the medical pharmacological, the company they expect it can be because molecular is different, cut the DNA process. But, but all, that's why we need more precaution. But Paxlovid, the more safely we can use in general, but this is the weak point of the medication. But I'm still not agree about the five day repeat to the Paxlovid, but some experts, they suggest since yesterday, cases were high age and the high risk groups why not we use only five days? Let's use a seven days course of Paxlovid. Probably we will propose the new remedy for a high risk group or lean infected group, something like that. Right, but we'll still have to wait then and see yeah. what decision they come up with. Professor Kim, also here on the local front, amid the summer, there are a number of summer evo events, of course, uh, given the season, and there have been a number of cl cluster cases at water parks and also at concerts where I understand giant cannons were used to spray water to the crowds. What precautions would you recommend to ensure pandemic prevention at such places? Uh, as we all know, uh, coronavirus spreads by air droplets and uh, if people is gathering in a small, small crowded uh, place, there's a lot of high chance of transmission, especially people, if people are singing, shouting, and eating. Uh, in summer times, people have a lot of activities with water. And every summer, we see a rise of uh, GI symptoms like gastroenteritis. There are various uh, infections uh, in the spreading in the water park or fountains and uh, etc. Uh, most of them have a transmission of uh, fecal oral transmission. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, from the feces, uh, it has find a way to get to your, t your hands and then you get infected. So there are some famous uh, viruses such as Coxsackie or norovirus or rotavirus and some bacteria. But we must remember that uh, uh, corona patients can spread uh, the live virus through uh, the feces. So uh, uh, corona is one of them, I mean. So uh, to avoid that kind of uh, phenomena, we have to uh, hand wash very thoroughly and uh, food hygiene is important and uh, uh, we should avoid overcrowded areas. Right. And Professor Yu, what are your words of advice with regard to travel this summer uh, period? Should we be using our own vehicle only? But what happens to those who need to take the train and airplane? And, and speak about that. I was wondering, is it better? Do you recommend wearing a KF94 face mask or perhaps a KFAD face mask while you're on the plane or on the train? Well, let's think a li little bit different. Because uh, in July last month, I was in Peru. Bolivia, in Dallas, in U.S., in the Bangkok, Thailand, in the Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia, and the Kigali, in Rwanda, for the sixth place. But different countries, they have a different, you know, policies to, against the COVID-19. For example, certain American airlines, in our world, born, 
why I was surprised because even the air cabin steps, no wear mask. They didn't recommend to the you know, passenger. But some airline in Southeast Asia, they said announced frequently, automatically, wear a mask, it's automatic response to every 30 minutes. But when you arrive in certain part of Africa, no mask. So how we can enjoy this, this the summer vacation in North Hemisphere, especially in Korea now? So like Southeast Asia, like Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, beautiful countries, in Indonesia and the Philippines, they are start, op, start often for Korean tourists. So also in Japan, limitedly, but it's already open. In air cabin, you know, this is the turbine is to be burned to the virus and refuel of the air. So it's very rare to transmit in air cabin. But train, it can be transmitted. But if you keep our loo, wear a mask properly and don't drink water, not eat, eating. But now in KTX and Korean lay, lay low services allowed to eat shortly, but yes, you allow it. But we better to not, in, to not take the snake for shortly in the your train, no problem. So which I mean, each country they have uh, treated and the face on COVID-19 totally different. For Korea, we are just start to open it, but don't be so afraid about it because if you have more than three times of vaccination or you got it experience of COVID-19, so its fatality is very low. So you can go travel. So there are no problem. But keep on your principle on personal hygiene, what you mentioned, care for somewhere more higher level, wear a mask properly and keep washing your hands, keeping the certain distance in other passenger, you have a right to enjoy the summer vacation. Right. So it doesn't matter where you, whether you're wearing a KF94 or KFAD. So usually I wear the dental mask, I even know. in the airplane. But how to wear a mask properly, very important. Even high level of wear protein, but we can call the chin wear to open your nose, doesn't work. You need to cover your nose. Absolutely. Right, I see. Now, Professor Kim, staying with this then, what do you suggest is a safe holiday plan amid this latest resurgence here in this part of the world? Well, uh, everybody has to keep his uh, personal hygiene and uh, because it is summer, you need hydration with uh, safe water. And um, if you plan for gathering, we recommend you a smaller gathering and make a proper plan to avoid crowding. And uh, if you have to buy something, you can purchase to, uh, to and visit the shop, but maybe we recommend online shopping as an alternative. And uh, uh, if there is a pe person with uh, underlying condition, the person has to be careful. As Professor Yu mentioned, it's everybody is going to get uh, COVID-19, but there are some people uh, high in age and with uh, many conditions, uh, that person should uh, uh, be careful uh, by himself. Right, of course. Yeah. And Professor Yu, what about you? What do you believe would be a safe way of spending the summer vacation this um, season? In North Hemisphere, fortunately, our countries and our neighbor countries are COVID condition in point of my view as stable. So even now, 100 more the thousand cases coming, but this is kind of the end of the Omicron variant. Probably another variant will come and restricting again, we will call the seventh wave something in the future. Now we're on the sixth wave. But summer vacations mean this is the new signal for our human being to overcome from the COVID-19 era. So you can enjoy it. But I'm 100% agreed what mentioned Professor Kim. Sorry to mention, especially my mom, and he break our law and she went to London, UK and mm. Australia, her hometowns, but she got it COVID as well. <laughs> but she's been fine. She's a middle of 70, I don't worry about it, but many people are stuck to the traveling. But if you recheck, revise about your health condition, you think it doesn't matter your age, but not much at high age, your health condition is good enough to travel is always in domestic, you can go. But always, and let me say, if you take a case of take out the mask, if there are no chance of wearing a mask, you should be avoid the people so surrounded. That is the kind of cue and the key to keep and the safe to travel this summer vacation. 
Right. Professor Kim, on the testing front then, given the resurgence in COVID-19 here, do you suppose, or well, some people are saying that uh, making testing free again perhaps may encourage more members of the public to seek screening. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm not sure. You know, uh, before we talk about the uh, charge of the testing, uh, we have to really think about the indication for PCR testing. Uh, when health authorities recommended meticulous uh, epidemiologic studies, uh, PCR testing was one of the key component of that sis uh, system. But now there's no more epidemiologic studies, so uh, situation has changed. So personally, uh, if I see a patient who is healthy, young, without any condition, and there's no one at risk in his family, we don't do the PCR test unless uh, uh, special exceptions. And uh, uh, there's one condition, the patient who is having fever or respiratory symptom, he has to voluntarily self-isolate because he didn't do the uh, PCR testing and he has a chance that he might have uh, uh, COVID-19. And for rapid antigen testing, uh, and I don't rely on uh, that test if it's negative. So uh, that's the opinion about the PCR testing. Right. Yeah. Professor, you, authorities here have said that checkup calls on high-risk patients, they've been halted from this week as a greater number of neighborhood clinics, as you mentioned earlier, are now equipped to offer appropriate medical care. What are your thoughts on this? Because some are worried that checkup calls are not being made to high-risk uh, patients of COVID-19. Well, this is, I'm saying, the welcome because the, before the COVID-19 first stage, we are so afraid about go to the clinic in the hospital because we are so afraid of we can, might catch from the somewhere internally from the hospital. But now we have to accept it. Is the COVID-19 is like a seasonal flu. Seasonal flu also still annoying us. At least 3,000 to 7,000 people are dead because of, seasonal flu, annually in Korea, we don't have an exact data, but we can presume about that. So we still worry about the seasonal influenza, but we not that much pre-code and worry about like COVID-19 this time. So if the government, they open the more clinic for, we can call one-stop clinic to have a diagnosis, PCR done, and taking the proper medicine, include Paxlovid or Molifera or whatever, is a one road and could be, we can accept like a seasonal influenza especially for aged people, because like uh, in Korea, we say tertiary and quarterly general hospital is always clouded. There are more chance to be catching from somewhere. And also there are cancer patients as well. But if you prepare in the specialized, professionally for respiratory and the COVID-19 clean in some part of point of the intersection who can access more easy, we have to prepare from now on before the winter season coming. So I am welcome, and we are used to, because people are, can expect it. For example, my hospital, general hospital, oh, very difficult to make appointment so far to reach the doctors, but we expected, oh, this town, light corner, in the nearby bus station, there are COVID-19 specialized clinic we get used to, we can go to welcome, and they will treat it us, we are safe past this winter season. Right, I see. Well, that is good to know that. All right, Professor, as always, thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. And Professor Kim, as always, your insights. Thank you very much. Thank you.